I don't know if I press that button. I think we are live. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, as always with these live streams, let me know if you can hear us and see us okay. And welcome to a four-player tutorial and playthrough of Footprints. We're going to be doing a full teach at the start. So if you are interested in just learning how to play the game, you can just watch the start of the video. Then we're going to be doing a four-player playthrough. Rob's joining me tonight. Hello. Over the other side of the table is another Rob. Hello. And Emily. Hello. Hopefully you can hear them as well. Uh, Footprints is the new game that came out from Chili Fox Games, who've sponsored this video. It was released at Essen Spiel, although I did manage to get my copy beforehand. Uh, I don't know about its availability. Um, I'm sure it is available. Check your friendly local game store um, if, if you can get hold of it. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get the rules tonight. One of the designers in the chat, thank you very much for joining us, Elif. Uh, and if we do get anything wrong during the playthrough, we'll be keeping an eye on the chat and hopefully he'll be correcting us, but hopefully we won't. But just in case we do, if you're watching this video back afterwards and a mistake is made that isn't picked up, then let me know, leave me a comment in the video and I will come back and I will add some Klingon subtitles into the video to make sure that it's okay. So if you're watching this back afterwards, turn on your subtitles, change it to the Klingon channel. And as I say, any corrections we will put in there. What else did I need to mention? I think that's it. Sounds about right. Right, okay. So I'm going to read the flavour text at the start of the rule book. So, thousands of years ago, story time with Paul. Uh, <laughs> near the end of the Ice Age, humans once again dwelt on fertile land, but a new challenge awaits. The ice is still melting, and that fertile land will soon be flooded. All living creatures must escape to the mountains. If you're over here. Um, your engravings and cave paintings will stand the test of time, and the skills you have honed will be passed on to your descendants. It is up to you to leave your footprints on the ground for generations to come. Hence, the name of the game. So in this game, we're all... Uh, yeah, it's it's prehistoric. Is it prehistoric? Is near the end of the Ice Age counts as prehistoric? I, 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 I don't know. Anyway, it's a long, long time ago. Pre-written history. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we are various clans... And each clan is represented by a player board. There are six player boards in the game because this game is four, one to six players. The stream is quite dark. Is it? Okay. It looks really bright on my screen. Um, but I can I can I can up the brightness a bit if if needed. Let me just switch that on. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Okay. Let me know if this is any better. Okay. Yeah, let me know if that's any better. Um, so, each clan is represented by a different player board. As I say, there are six player boards in the game. They're slightly different, and these get shuffled and dealt out at random at the start of the game. And what we're going to be doing is each of us has a meeple, which is our player colour, and we're going to be starting out on here on one of these home tiles, and we're going to moving gradually over the course of the game to try and get to the mountains. Some of us may get there, some of us may not, but we carry on playing turn after turn until the end of the game is triggered. Now, we do need to pick a start player at random, so I'm going to put two in each hand. There you go, Rob. Start player is me. Right, so I'm the start player. I have the chewed up uh, tusk. That never changes. So basically, we're going to take it in turns around the table. Uh, the end of the game is triggered when either... One player reaches the mountains at the end of their turn. That triggers the end of the game. Or you have a deck of cards. You have your leader and you have 13 other cards. So you have 14 cards in total. You are going to play all 14 cards over the course of the game. And when you play all of your cards, that triggers the end of the game. So there's, there's a maximum of 14 turns. But it can end earlier if somebody gets to the end. Either way, however you trigger the end of the game, you always play until everybody's had the same number of turns. So Rob, you will always take the last turn of the game. And if you take the last turn of the game by getting to the mountains, that's it. Game is game is over. The idea, okay, here we go. Historic time start from when there is written source of material. Ah. Now, it depends if you class cave paintings as a written source of material. I'm guessing not. It's only the pictographic. Rather. Pictographic rather than writing. Thank you very much for that. Um, so yeah. We're going to score points in this game. The objective is that we're going to get footprint points or just points. Uh, and we use this score pad at the end of the game to track that. Now, you've each got a player aid and that has the scoring summarised on it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through this now so that you know generally what you're aiming for. 
So the first thing is, if you manage to reach the mountains, you will notice at the end there are spaces from 10 points down to, uh, sorry, 15 points down to 10. When you arrive there, you go on the highest numbered space. So if you're the first player to get to the mountains, 15 points. Engravings. If you have a look on your player board, you will see that you've got these four engravings. The cost to build them is shown with an icon with an X through it. And how many points you get is shown in a foot. So, for example, my axe, if I engrave that axe, it's worth five points. My tunic is worth three. My bowl is worth six. And my hut is worth nine. So we've all got, I think, the same numbers. No. But just in, no, different or different numbers. Three, four. No. Okay. Five, different three, numbers. Five, six, nine. Okay. But anyway. Yeah, they're different. Anyway, your engravings, if you engrave them and put them on the board, they will be worth the indicated points at the end of the game. The next thing is skills. You have four skills which match the terrain types. So this is your skill in mountains, ice, forest, and mire. And if any of the skill markers get to position 10, it's three points at the end of the game. If any of them get to position uh, 11, that's seven points at the end of the game. Is that a total of 10 or is it three or seven? Uh, that's a that's a good point, actually. I think it's seven. I think it's three or seven, depending on where you are at the end of the game. Let's just check. Yeah, three or seven points. Right. Okay. Next, footprint cards. So footprint cards, you're going to be collecting these over the course of the game. Each one has got an objective printed on the top. And if you choose, whenever you gain one of these, you can choose to keep it or throw it away. If you keep it, then you must accomplish what's printed on it by the end of the game. And if you do, you get six points. If you don't, you lose three. Now, I'll tell you this now because this caught me out. I say, as long as you've completed it by the end of the game, you can complete this whenever. And when you complete it, you flip it over. The reason why that's important is this one, for example, is for having one piece of wood and having built your, having done your cave painting. So as soon as you've done your cave painting and you have a piece of wood, you've accomplished that, you can now spend the wood. So it's not an end of game scoring card. That one isn't. Some of them, you know, are. But anyway, that, that's those. Every single one of these that you get and complete is worth six points. And if you don't complete it, you lose three points. Cave paintings. So unlike your engravings, which are worth a fixed number of points, your cave painting is this marker here. So we each have a nice thick cave painting marker and you're going to be building that onto, see if I press the right button. Yay. These are caves. These were randomly placed at specific locations. This is a ran randomly set up board, but the caves have been randomly chosen. And to build a cave painting, you've got to be on a space adjacent to it. You build it there. and That will be worth the points at the end of the game based on the cave. And I'll go through all of them in a, in a minute. So that's your cave painting. Resources. If you have any resources left at the end of the game, every two is worth one point. Not very much. And finally, fire cards. You're going to be collecting fire cards over, during the course of the game. They're really powerful. They do great things. If you've got any of them left, they're worth one point each. Any questions on the scoring? Right. OK, so what do you do? Well, on your turn, Let's do the setup. Let's finish the setup. So you've got 14 cards in total. One of them is a leader. You'll notice there's a big letter A on the leader. We're playing because it's your first game. We're playing with the A leaders. Each one of us has a B leader. And when you play the advanced game, you can choose which one you want to use. The rest of your cards, 13 of them are here. And I'm just going to refer you back to the player board. Because here is exactly what cards I've got in my deck. I have one leader. I have four forest related cards, four mountain related cards, three Maya related cards and two ice related cards. They're all slightly different. You need to know this makeup of cards in your deck so that halfway through the game, when you've played three forest cards, I know I've only got one forest card left in my deck, for example. And you can always look at your discard pile to work out what's still in there. Anyway, take your deck of cards, give them a triple, deal out seven. Then take your leader, shuffle it into the seven, and put that on top of the other cards. So you've got a 14 card deck, your leader is in the top eight. It's so that the leader doesn't come out in the second half of the game. Then what you do is you take the top four cards and you lay them out in a line. 
like so. You do not have a hand of these cards. You have four of them on display, and on your turn, you choose one of those cards, and you put it on your discard pile, and you do the thing on the card. That card is then gone. So every single card is only playable once, and you will play it once. So, Rob and Emily, you, you've got your leaders. Leaders, slightly different. They basically do what they say on the card. And if you've got any questions about them, we'll cover them later. So, first thing you do on your turn is you choose one of your clan cards, and you play that clan card. If you had a fire card, you may play that fire card with it. If you play your leader card, you cannot play a fire card with it, because the leader's special. So you play a clan card, possibly with a fire card. Then what you do is you execute one of the actions on that card. So each card has a top action or a bottom action. And you either do the top or you do the bottom. Now the top is always related to movement. And the bottom is always related to advancing your skills on your track. And as I say, they are, they are slightly different. So I'm going to now talk about the advancing of skills because that's really easy. So for example... If I decide to use this card here, and I use the bottom effect of this card, I advance my skill in the forest by one, and I advance my skill in ice by one. And if you move onto a space with an icon, mm -hmm. then you get that thing. So the circles are the different resources. You've got berries, you've got wood, uh, you've got stone, and you've got mammoths. If you see the fire symbol, you draw a fire card. So that would be increase my forest skill by one, so it goes from two to three, that's increased my ice skill from two to three. And that is I get to move one space onto any type of terrain. Okay, That's what that is. Now, the reason why there's a, a little arrow is you can move over other people. I'll explain that a little bit more later on. Rob, you're asking me what the footprint symbol is. Yes, the footprint is you draw a footprint card. Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, which you can either keep, put face up or throw away. Okay. Right, the top part of each card is movement. And that icon there, what that means is move as far as you can through forest up to your skill level. So the higher your skill level, the more you get to move. So basically, in this game, every card is, do I want to improve my skills, which is going to help me move further later on, or do I want to move right now? That's the decision you make. Now, some of them have two things on. That is move a number of spaces through mountains equal to my skill level. And that is plus one ice. And that one ice can be at any time. So if my skill level in mountains was six, I could move four through mountains, one on ice, and then two through mountains. Any questions about how these cards work? Symbol here just showing you what the... It's showing you what the primary terrain type for that card is. And it's referred to on certain fire cards. Excellent. So let's have a look at the board. So the start of the board has got these home tiles on. And what we're going to do just before the game starts in reverse order, starting with you, Rob, because mm -hmm. you are the last player. You're going to choose one of these starting tiles and you're going to get the bonus immediately that's printed on that tile. So some of the bonuses are move your mountain marker up by one and your Maya marker. That's just get some resources. That's one resource and any one track. Any one track and fire, just fire. So if we were playing a six player game, I think that would be the last one to be taken. Uh, ice and Maya and a piece of wood. So we're, go we're gonna choose a starting one. And let's say, for example, we just end up going like this. Right, so when you move, I've mentioned you move a number of hexes equal to your skill value mm -hmm. and possibly one other you basically go from one hex to the next mm -hmm. and then after you've moved every icon that you've passed through or landed on you get that bonus and it's the same icons as we've already seen footprint cards resources fire etc etc so this is step two of your turn execute one action uh which is basically you know either move or do an improvement so let's say, for example, I, I moved and I went through that and through that and I ended there. I'd get a mammoth for that and a mammoth for that, just for example. The third thing that you do on your turn is you can build. Now, there's two things in the game that you can build, and that is you can engrave or you can do a cave painting. So it's not really building, but possibly as such. 
So to build one of your engravings, you have to spend the resources shown. So for me, it's three stone for the axe, two mammoths for the tunic, three berries for the bowl, and four wood for the hut, but it's different for each of you. And you build it on an adjacent space that matches the terrain of it. So the hut can only be built in the forest. Yeah, the hut cannot be built on the ice. But when you build it, you immediately get all of the resource icons adjacent to it that are uncovered. So if I, if, so I don't get that one, for example, because I was there, right? Uh, so yeah, you get an immediate benefit whenever you do an engraving. Cave paintings, you have to be, let's just zoom across a bit. Here we go. So to build that cave painting, you have to be either there, there or there. And then what you do is you pay one of each resource and you put the cave painting there. Similar to when you do an engraving, you get the bonuses next to it. But as I mentioned earlier, the cave painting is worth a variable number of points at the end of the game rather than uh, a fixed number of points. So while we're talking about cave paintings, let's go through the different bonuses. This one's really easy. At the end of the game, two points for each level of your Maya track. This is two points for each level of your ice, and this is two points for each level of your forest. So those three are nice and easy. Let's go to the right. Uh, this one is... Now, is that what I think it is? I think it is. I think that is, you get your engravings again. So however many points you've got for your engravings, you get those points again. This one is five points for each. Now, what's that icon? It's a footprint, it's a footprint card. So that'll be for every completed footprint. I think it's for every completed footprint card. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, for every completed footprint card, because it's got a tick on it. That's it, it's a green tick. So they're, they're effectively worth 11 points each. That one is two points for each of your Maya level. And this one over here, which is off camera, this one over here is three points times the your lowest skill level. So the caves, the slightly different ones included in the game, we're not using all of them. You shuffle them, you pick them out at random. And in a four, five or six player game, you populate the first four boards, which is why there are no cave paintings here. In a one, two or three player game, you would only populate to here. So for anybody who watched my practice game this afternoon, we got it slightly wrong. We actually put some on here and we shouldn't have done because that was a two player game. Right, so that was step three, which is building something. Step four, and I'm just gonna show you my player board because in step four, if you have an engraving thing already built on the board, you now have a new ability. That ability is Spend as many tokens as you want of that type to move your marker one space forward for each token spent. And that is step four. So you can only do that after you've moved and after you've built something. That is pretty much it. Step five is the fire card that you played, if you played one, gets discarded. And then if you have more than three fire cards in hand, you must lose them down to three. Yeah, so never do that. Always play them. And the final step of the turn is that will now be on the discard pile. You draw a new one and you replace it. That's it. That's that's your turn sequence. Any questions about the turn sequence? The movement is the trickiest bit. Now I did say that I was going to explain this icon a bit more. Mm. It is move one hex to any adjacent empty space onto any terrain type. But there's a little arrow on it. What that arrow means is if there's somebody there, you can jump over them. So if I'm here and somebody was there and I did that icon, mm -hmm. I could go. Whoop. And if there was two people there, you could go. Whoop. But they have to be in a straight line. Okay, with, with, with that, not diagonal. Okay. Well, they can be diagonal, but as long as they're okay. still in a straight line. Now, a quick note about. So that's the special movement. A quick note about normal movement. Uh, you have to count spaces occupied by other people, but you cannot land on them. So, for example, if yellow was to move five on the ice now, they could go one, two, three, four, five. They would still have to count these spaces as moved through, but they cannot end their movement on those spaces. Mm -hmm. So you just have to choose a different route if you can't. You have to choose a different route. Uh, the designer said, important point about step four, you can only choose one type, but spend as many as you want. Thank you very much for that. So if you have 
constructed more than one of your engravings, in step four, you can only activate the power of one of them. But you can do it as many times as you want, but only one of them. Thank you very much for that. Right. Um, looking at the board, is there anything that you can see that I haven't talked about? I think so. So it's gather resources, gain bonuses, mm -hmm. uh, improve your skills. You only have a total of 14 actions. 14 to turns and... maximum in the game. Okay, I'm going to show you some fire cards. So fire cards, you may play a fire card from your hand. These are secret once you've got them. You may play one of these if you play a clan card, but not your leader card. Mm -hmm. Most of them are fairly self-explanatory. That one is move that marker back to move all the three forward. That one is spend a mammoth token to move any two markers forward. Move three spaces on ice. Mm -hmm. Now that can't be mixed in with your normal movement. You either do the fire card first, then your clan card, or vice versa. And you don't have to have started on ice, nope. do you? It's going in. Okay. Nope. You, so your first movement would be onto the ice. Onto and the although ice. it looks like it's a straight line there, it doesn't have to be a straight line. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, we know that one. Yep, yeah, we know that one. Yeah, we know that one. Where's the one I'm looking for? There's the one I'm looking for. So Rob, earlier on, you asked what the icon meant on, on the top right of the cards. Uh, that's that's that. So if I play a clan card that is either attuned to Forest or Maya, I get to do both actions. I get to do the top and the bottom of the card uh -huh. in either so, order. Nice. So that's it. Yeah, so fire cards are powerful. They allow you to do extra stuff and they are worth a point at the end of the game. Paul is saying, do you have to be able to move the relevant token back or are you both? You've got to move it back. Yeah, you have to. If you've got a card that's moving a token back, mm. you have to be able to move that. Yeah. Back. You are paying a cost, so you have to be able to pay the cost. Yeah. Now, in the basic version of the game, which is what we're playing today, everybody gets a footprint card. This is your starting footprint card, which goes mm. face up, pop it below your clan cards. In the advanced version of the game, which is what you would always play after you've played the game once, you get three of these. Choose one, put the others in the bottom of the deck. Mm -hmm. Just pop it down there. Yep. Is it three or is it two? For some reason I got three in my head. Advanced player setup. Yeah, three. So you would get three random, three cards at random. Choose one, and that is the one that you would get. But for your first game, we're just going to do that. That's fine. So you two have got your leaders out already. Do you understand what they do? I, I think so, yeah. Okay, Emily, you okay with yours? Yeah. Right. Ours are in the decks, so when, when they come out, we'll get to them. Quick question about yes. the fire ones. You've got to That's have not, it's a footprint. It's a footprint yeah. card. You've got to have collected the resource and... And have built your cave painting. Built the cave yeah. painting. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier on, you as soon as you've got that, you flip the card over, you can then spend that resource. Yeah. Everybody okay with what they're footprint cards do yep we'll just go through them mine is that the sum of the positions of my uh mountain marker and my ice marker must be 15 or higher mine is my forest marker must be at least five and i must have built, uh, painted my bowl and axe cave mm -hmm. paintings i think this says uh both forest and stone have to be seven or more seven or more mm. and emily is yeah cave painting and stone cave painting and the uh, designer just wanted to clarify about movement. You are allowed to move backwards, right? You can you can move in any direction. And in fact, in the game we played this afternoon, I was going, I, w I was about here and we had two turns left and I knew I wasn't going to get to the end and I was really stuck and I hadn't done my cave painting. So I actually came back. But you can you can go back and forth. You can go however you want, but you cannot activate the same symbol more than once. So if I had six movement and went one, two, three, four, five, six, I can, I get one mammoth. Yeah. yeah. So you, you are allowed to backtrack and do that. Yeah. You just can't get the icon more than once. Uh, a built engraving, again, just to clarify, that is a, a space. You can move through that space. That's right. And as you said, when we, when we place the painting, it's placed on the adjacent X where we're currently standing. And that has to match the around. terrain type, yeah, and then it gets all of the bonuses around it. Yeah. Around it, but not, not the one it's placed on. Not the one that it's placed on. Yeah. You, you can put it on something if you want to. You might not want to. Okay. That's grand, thank you. 
Are we all good to go? Yeah. I think so. Right. Yeah. Okay. So my first turn. And. Uh, Don't we pick our uh, oh yes, first? yes, okay. starting locations. Start. Off you go, Rob. I'll go back. I three. will start on the second one down, please. So you are uh, yellow. Yellow. So you gain one mammoth and one berry. Yep. One mammoth and one berry. Thank you very much. Emily, where would you like to start? Oh, sorry. You cannot build engravings on bonus symbols. Apologies for that. I got that wrong. I'll start on the top one. Uh, yeah. Wrong button. That one. There What's you go. that one? So that's yes. your mountain and so your the top one mile. is. You're great. You're great. You're like great. Yeah. Like light green. Oh, okay. this one's. On. Yeah. Rob. Tricky. Oh yeah. I think I'll start on this one. Mm -hmm. So you get one berry. Yeah. And one of your markers goes up by one. I'll choose the one that I get. Yeah, I'll this one. Well, I know this This is the uh, thing I'm aiming for. Mm -hmm. I I'm... think I'm going to get a fire card. So I'm going to increase any one of my things by one. And I'm going to increase the forest by one. And I'm going to get myself a fire card. James is asking, can it be played solo? It can. It is a one to six player game. You, yeah, you're against the clock because the, uh, yeah. the ice wall closes yeah. in behind you. Okay, okay so... There's another rule I haven't mentioned, and that is that icon that allows you to jump somebody mm -hmm. cannot use to jump somebody who's on a home tile. Okay. So it doesn't apply uh, at the very, very start of the game. Yeah, so Paul I think can't, it says Paul that jump over <laughs> Rob and land there. Oh, sorry, okay. uh, where is it? Where is it that it says that? Jump on. Yeah, uh, you cannot move to a home token or jump over a pawn positioned on a home token. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to choose this card. And I was... Oh, did we do that straight up? Mm, no. Hmm. I could have a pretty big first turn, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this card. Uh, <laughs> the problem is having played this game twice, I'm now thinking a lot more about my turns. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, yeah, okay. So... Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play this, and I'm gonna do the bottom part of it. So I'm gonna increase my forest skill by one, my ice skill by one, and I'm gonna to move to an adjacent tile, and it's gonna be that tile there. That card goes to my discard pile. Uh, I'm not building. I'm not gonna use any bonuses, so I get a new card. <laughs> That's me done. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna choose this one. Yeah, you just pop it. Pop it on your discard pass right away. Yeah. Top so, or bottom? So I'll do the bottom one. Yep. Yeah. It pushes me up. One on grey. Mountain skill up by one. And one on Maya skill up by one. Maya. And you get one movement to an adjacent. So hex. I could be a bit awkward here, but people will jump over me anyway. So but you could. I could take. You here. could go to here. Yes. Or you could go to there. Um, I'm not deliberately mm. being difficult, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's not difficult, Rob. You've got to do well, I know you get further along the board, but then you miss out on the resource. Yeah. No, I don't miss on the resource. Oh, we, jump up, maybe we go over it. So if you pass over it, you get it. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. it's everything that you pass Actually, over or yeah. land on. Right. Okay. Missed yeah. that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so well, yeah. well, as long as it's uncovered. So if I was on a bonus space, you wouldn't get that bonus. Yeah. Oh, because because I'm stood on it. So oh. if I'm standing here, then oh, okay. you, you can't see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Interesting. But. I'm quite happy to go this way anyway. Mm -hmm. And get the footprint card. Yeah, you get a footprint card. So you draw it, look at it, keep it, or throw it away. <clears throat> well, that's completely at odds with what I'm already trying to do. So I'm going to throw it away. Okay, and you just pop it there. It's a bit annoying. Yep. It's the two opposite colours to what you've already started on. Oh. Yeah. Right. And then you replace your card. And Emily, you sure go. I'm going to do the bottom one as well. Yeah. Forest, ice, ice, and one movement. 
And I'll go on the map. I'm going to go on to the mammoth. You get one of these. You get one of these. There you go. Thank you. Okay. I'll do this one. So I'll go up on the forest, up on the mountain, and I'll just leap over Emily. Right, now that we've all had one turn, I'm going to give you some tactical tips. On your first turn, make sure... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, first of all, as I've already mentioned, keep an eye on your terrain cards and how many have gone. So that you're looking at the terrain ahead and thinking, oh, why am I not drawing a forest card? And, oh, I've used all my forest cards. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Uh, don't be afraid to take the lower action of your clan card early in the game, which is what we've done, because obviously you're increasing the values ready for later. Uh, don't try to maximise all your cards at the expense of progress. That sounds like a philosophical rule to me. Fire cards are great. Don't be afraid to use them because you will. there are various places to get more. Uh, make sure you collect as many bonuses as you can and build engravings as soon as you can because then you can spend extra resources to pump the skill trees up, which means you'll then get to move further. Right, okay, back to me. So, mm -hmm. where am I? I'm blue. Um, my forest skill is four, so that's quite good. I think I might use this card for movement. Yeah, I'm going to use this card for movement. My forest skill is four, so I get four points of movement on forest and one on Maya at some point. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and then the one on the Maya. So I gain a wood, passing through there, and I gain a fire card. That's my second fire card. And then I replace it. Hey! My hunter has come out. Okay, Rob. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to do another build up one again. So I'm going to do the bottom action of this one. So forest up by one. <clears throat> Maya up by one, which triggers a fire bonus. You get to draw a fire card. You. <clears throat> so they are secret, but if you're not sure what they do, feel free to ask. Right. Okay, that's interesting. And you get to move one space to an adjacent hex. Yeah, so I'll move to here. Yeah. Okay, and then you replace the yep. card that you played discards, replace it with a new one. All right, Emily. <clears throat> Tricky, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to use this one, the bottom. Bottom. So mounting up by one, which gets you a piece of wood. And the bits on the Which gets you a piece of stone. Yeah. And you get one movement. Uh, Just this, yeah. Jump over? Right. Yeah. Okay. Replace the card. Let's... And rob. Hmm. I'm going to trigger this one mm -hmm. with my Maya up and my, and my mountain up, which gets me a mammoth. There you go. Thank you. And then I will jump one diagonally up, please. So there. That's it. Okay. Right, turn three. So my hunter, I can move up to four spaces, ignore terrain restrictions, but instead of getting the resources, I get skills. I don't think now is a good time for that. So. Yeah, none of this is any good. So we're going to use this to improve some stuff. Um, it will be this one. So Maya is up by one. Mountain is up by one. I'm going to move through there. Oh, hang on. Did I want to play a fire card with it? Hmm. Yes, I'm going to play that fire card with it. So after I've done that, I'm going to do this, which is that one down by one. That one up by one. That one up by one, which gets me a wood. That one up by one, that gets me a footprint card. Now, quick mention. Whenever you move a marker back on the track, you do not get the bonus that you land on. But if you were to move two back and then forward again, you would get the bonus as you move forward. 
Fire card gets discarded. Uh, right, footprint card. Do we want that? Sure. My default answer. Take it. Suffer the penalties later. Right, Rob. Okay. Um, so I could do the bot marks for that and play my fire card. You, you can. Yeah, the only time you can't play the fire <laughs> card is when you use your leader. Yeah, so I'll do that. Right, so what uh, fire card is it? The fire card is that Spend a berry for any two advancements. So I'll spend my drive. berry. Yeah, it's nice. But then I'll advance two on... Which that? gets you a berry Which back. Yeah, okay. Back anyway. Um, so the fire card is gone. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And then I'll do this one, which is gives me a grey increase, which, which is, is a wood. Some wood. And a green increase, which is a some stone. stone. And, and then I'll move one, one onto the wood. Which gets you another wood. Lots of resources. Thank you all. Okay. Over to place. you, Emily. There, your drop. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Using this one. Uh, the top one. Top. So, top. what's your skill in ice? Uh, four. four. So, you get to move four on ice. Yeah. So, one, two, three, four. Four just before the footprint. So, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Getting a mammoth as you go through. Yes, please. There you go. Thank you. Any building? No, I can't. Mm. Um, oh. I don't know how much your tunic costs I, to build. I can actually. You I'm, could. I could spend two. If you want to think. There's not a bad place for it because you would gain those two resources. Yeah. I'll build it. Okay. But I think I'll build it here actually. You can't build, you can't actually build them on bonus spaces. Ah, uh, okay. So on there. Mind. Okay, so you gain, uh, so you spend the two mammoths to build it, then you gain a mammoth and a stone. Good. Okay, and then that's going to be worth points to you at the end of the game. Okay, I'm going to use this one for the lower ability. So mm -hmm. I'm going to move my forest and my mire, which gets me a stone, please. I'll jump one diagonally up and get myself that fire. Thank you. Right. So where am I? I'm there. I think we're going to do some moving on mountains, which is four. So I'm going to use this card. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to use this card. So I've got four movement on mountains and one on ice. I'm going to move all of the mountain first. One, two, three, four. And then one on ice. So I gain a footprint card and some stone. Can you? Yeah, I'm gonna have that. That goes to my discard pile. I get a new card. Not building anything. So, Rob. Okay. Um, I think it's time I use my rider. It's time, is it? So, what does your rider do? So, my rider uh, says choose a terrain type. Move up to as many spaces on that terrain as your corresponding skill level. Then repeat the above, choosing a different terrain type. Do not collect bonuses. Okay, so basically move far, yeah. but don't get anything on the way. Yeah, I didn't read the last line. <laughs> but but anyway. You can change your mind if you want. But no, uh, I think I'll do it anyway. Because at no. this point in the game, your skill yeah. levels are quite low. Yeah, well I could move a total of eight with that card. Um, but yeah, it's when, do you, when do you do it? It's, yeah. it's the same terrain type, a different terrain different. type. Yeah. So it's X on one terrain type and then Y on another terrain type. I suppose you could move it a lot in one terrain and, you yeah. and get loads of bonuses, but you don't yeah. get bonuses. You don't get bonuses, but so. you potentially, if you left it till the second half of the game, you could like move seven and then another yeah. seven. It's up to you. Is that going to happen? It's up to you. Yeah. You might want to rush to get one of the cave painting sites early. <clears throat> I think I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Uh, just so. because it gives me more options about the yeah. other things as well. So choose a terrain type. I'll choose ice. And you are on skill of four on ice? Four ice. Can't end there. All right, so I can't as part of the two mm. actions. Good good question. Good question. And hopefully, if the designer can let us know, Rob wants to move four and then four, but he's going through somebody on the way. I'm not sure if 
it says in the rules. I'm not sure if we have an explanation of the. Uh, it counts as stopping. Yeah, I I would say it counts as stopping because it kind of says repeat the effect. Right. Okay. So that means it's probably not a good time. Possibly not. Well, I could I could actually do it differently. I could go one, two, three, four, and forest, and then yeah. do the four. So it doesn't actually matter. Okay. Um, so the question was, and I'll show you the uh, I'll show you the board. But Rob is Rob wanted to use his rider card, and his first part of the movement would have ended on this space, but then he was going to do the second part of the movement and move on. Um, and I don't think you can do that. I think I think it's two separate movements, and both of them must end on an empty space. But yeah, let, let me know. But you've found a different way of doing it. You've just gone four on the forest because forest, your skill is four in the forest. And yeah. then... Well, I can go five in the Maya. You go five in the Maya. I only mm. need you to go four, I think. But if you go five... He doesn't yeah. get resources. You're not going to get resources anyway, but you stop yeah. somebody else from getting that resource and you're further ahead. Yes. But you might want to stop there. I, I think I do. Okay. Yeah. And you didn't want to build anything? Uh, I don't know whether you can. I no, I can't. Okay, Emily. That's a... Okay. Yeah, two separate movements, so you can't land on another player's space. Thought so. Thank you. Okay. We've got scary. This is my last ice card. Is that your last ice card? Yeah. So you've only got two ice cards in yeah. your deck, and that's your last one. That's quite terrifying. Yeah. But you know that, so you need to make sure you're not traveling <laughs> that bit... long ice. Yeah. We have to look at our discards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just wish I'd get some of the ones where I've got more of now so right. that I could keep my options open for later. Mm -hmm. But that's not. Um, the grey, I do have nowhere near anything like that. So it seems we've us, we've all got four forest cards, Rob's got three. Yeah. I assume the other two clans that were not included in the game, yeah, they are two. But we're all good at forests. Yep, so we are, you were correct, couldn't end the turn off. Yeah. Um, There's no point in doing this one yet because there's no stone near that forest. Mm. I feel like I might have to use up my last ice, but then. What, just for improving moving tracks? On ice. Or moving on ice? Yeah. I mean, from where you are, you can move on ice or my or, or I could forest. improve on tracks. I could do this one just to yeah. improve on the track. Yeah, we'll do that one. <clears throat> okay. Do the bottom action. So, mountain one. skill, forest skill, and one Ooh. movement. Is that one movement going to put you on the footprint? Oh, maybe not. Yeah. I have a footprint card. Do you want to keep it? Oh. What's it for? Well, I've already done part of it. I've already put my okay. cloth out, but then it's got to have six on those two. Yeah, you'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Loads of time. <laughs> Sorry. Right. New card. Rob. Oh. Okay. I'm going to be using the mountain movement now. Yep. Still not Your mountain moved. skill is four. Yep. So I'll move through the two stones One, two, and three, on the four. stone next to Emily. She gives me two stone. Two stone. And then I will spend three stone to engrave an axe. To engrave an axe, and I'll drop that down just to the north of me so I yeah, get stone. You get, you get stone back. back. Don't forget, those of you that have got engravings may now do step four, yeah. which is spend resources to move up tracks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, and as I just mentioned, yeah, you can use your mammoth to increase the movement. In other words, use your mammoth to increase the skill. But that can only be done in step four. Yeah. So you have to kind of plan a, yeah. a bit ahead. There. 
that comes out to there. Right. I am thinking whether I want to use my super super hunter ability. Because he's in quite a good position. Um, although I seem to be increasing that and I don't need that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to use my hunter. So my hunter says, ignoring terrain restrictions, move up to four spaces. But instead of uh, the resource bonus, I get the corresponding still mark, skill marker advancement instead. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, which is a instead of a berry and a stone, I move that up and that up getting me a mammoth. Hunter has gone. Get a replacement card. Uh, did I want to build anything before seeing that card? No, I can't. So that's me done. Cool. Um, interesting. I think I use this card. Mm -hmm. And I do the bottom action. Yep. Which so, gets me more bonuses. Ice skill. Forest um, skill. Forest skill. And move one hex. Almost regretting throwing away that uh, other footprint card. Mm. Um, but that's it. Okay. Not a very exciting turn. Emily. I'm going to do the bottom one of this one. Yeah. So forest up by one, getting you a fire card. And then you move one in onto the onto the berry. The berry. Thank you. Okay, Rob. Okay, I'm going to use this one for the lower ability. So oh. I move on that one to there, and this one to there, which gets me a berry. Berry. And I'll jump one onto the foot symbol. Let's have a look. Let's play my shirt and I've got eight up on the ice track. Um, I think I'm going to take it. You're going to take it? Yep. Right. And then. Um, Replacement card. Oh, did you want to build? Yeah. Can you build? I've got two berries. you got two berries, so, so, so you could build bowl, a bowl. But Emily. It would have to go there. Yep. You wouldn't get any bonuses for it, but I get it there. At least it's down. I think I'll hold off for now because there's other things I can grab. Yep. Then I will. That's why I was playing a fire card at the same time. Oh, okay, right. Yep. Uh, spending one stone. Spending one stone. To move up uh, two one tracks. on the mountain track, which gets me another fire card. And one on the ice track. Okay. And then that fire card is discarded. Right. So. I need to get myself some more wood problem is there's only two forests there so that is a bit of a waste and that's not good that's not good that's okay sort of oh actually that works right plan i'm going to play this one it's movement five on maya and one on ice. I'm going to do the one on ice first. Play that, yeah. Or am I? No, and then five on Maya. So you'll like this. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Just for fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I only get the bonus once. Mm -hmm. I get the bonus once. Like I'm going to build a cave painting. Yes. So I've got one of each. <laughs> My cave painting goes there. You get right that. The cave. No. <laughs> that is for light green track that I seem to be doing. Right. Okay. So that's it. Rob. I should change my plans now. Yeah. Comes along to the cave, finds that there's already pictures of men with spears on. Can't have more than one picture. Shakes fist. No, no, no. I've, I've graffitied the entire cave. Well, it's only got one on it, but I'm going to have to use it at some point. Maybe. Yeah, it does get me into the right place, so. 
I'm going to go and use this one for uh, movement or for the bottom one. For the bottom one. So to one up on the elephant. And it puts me one up on here. Yep. So one mammoth. Yep. And that's it. <clears throat> I could build something, I suppose. No, I can, I'm going to have some resources. Right, Emily. There's so little joining of terrain up here. Yeah. It's not a good place. So both these together. Okay. So which one do you want to do first? Um. It makes no difference. Okay. It's four on the same terrain. Right. Do one, two, three, four. Okay. So that was with that one and then the three from the other one. Yeah. So you're going to get a berry from the card and another berry from that and a footprint card. That's a footprint card and two berries. And are you going to keep the footprint card? Um, yeah. Cool. That's just having those things. Yeah. So you've almost got that. Almost. You want to just pop your resources oh, here, yeah. just because we can't see them. And you have a lot of them. Okay. Any building or anything? Yes. No. No. Um... And using of skills. Um, no. Okay. No. No, no. Right. Got a plan. I do. <laughs> but you don't know if it's the right one. Rob. Okay. So I'm going to play this fire card along with this one. Mm -hmm. So I can do both these actions. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so yeah, because that terrain matches that, you get to do both of those. So that goes up one, yep. that goes up one. Yep. I can move any one move. One movement. Which would just be to jump on, just jump forward onto the zip. That's not me. That's not you. Zip. Is your berry? Yep. I'll do. And then the top three, action yep. is. Three moves that gets me to next to Emily. One, two, three. And then those two go down. Which... Well, you get a footprint card. Oh, yep. Yep. So do you want to keep that one up? Yes. And then two berries for the... Two berries from a bowl, which means I've then completed this one. Because I've got five forests, bowl and axe. Nice. Where's the, where the bowl going? It'll go there, and I'll get myself a... Is it wood? Wood. Do I then get another... And footprint? another footprint card. Okay. I'll have a look at the footprint card. Thank you. That's you. Nice. That's that one. Yeah, combo I'm plastic. One too. I've only got one wood. Uh, right. So. And I need to set myself up ready for next turn, which is a bit tricky. So, how many ice cards do I have in my deck? Two. How many have I seen so far? None. So I could use that for that. <laughs> Chance of me drawing it? One in four. So we've only got four goes left. Uh, and these. Yeah. yeah. You have eight. Eight. Yeah. Okay. Not. We're approaching yeah. halfway, but every as these keep going up, every card we play, you yeah. should move further and further every time if you can get the right terrain. Okay, I yeah, I'm not getting the resources. That's so. I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to play that card with that fire card and just do the bottom effects. So I get a mammoth and I move one to there. Then on this card, I move the ice up by one, the mire up by one and move to there, which gets me a stone. So I get a stone, 
and I get a, a fire card. So I throw that card away. I get a new one. That goes to there. Do I want to build? I can't build. Tactical tip, build your engravings early, it said. <laughs> Halfway through the game, not build a single one. But I did get my cave painting down. So. Okay, Rob. It's not right. Is it? No, it's not. Ah, I've got three cars that move me on mountains, and I'm nowhere near mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to go for slow movement again. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I move one, and I'll gain a blue thing, which gives me a footprint. Yeah, and I'll go up green. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. All. Um, I think. Well, if I don't make that, then I'm going to lose badly. So <laughs> you're going to take it. <laughs> okay. No building? Uh, no. Using of skills and stuff? I don't have any. No, you don't have any yet. Right, okay. Uh, did I throw a tribe member into the fire discard pile? Nope. Nope, I don't think I did. No, I threw a fire card into the fire discard pile. I'm not that cruel. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. No, we're all good. All fourteen tribe members are accounted for. Present and correct, sir. No one got thrown into a fire. He <laughs> slipped and fell. If you keep saying he was pushing, he slipped and fall into a fire. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, highly, it's, it's a highly contagious yeah, condition, slipping and falling into a fire. Yeah. Be careful on the edge of that fire. It would be unfortunate if you were to fall in. <laughs> there. Okay. Very dull, but I will. This one for the build up at the bottom. So that moves up, getting me a footprint card. That moves up, getting me another mammoth token, please. Footprint card. There, getting me a berry. Mammoth token, berry. Thank you. So instead, I'm definitely taking that one because I'm already going for for it. So just even more reason for me to get those two even further up. Uh, discard and draw. So you flip that one because you've already done it. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. So those two are pretty much the same. Both those need to get up a bit higher. Yeah. That needs a bit more resource, and that just needs that built and that built. So I'm <clears> betting <throat> on that one a bit. It's going to move me to there. Then that's no good. That's no good, and that's it's going to have to be. I'm definitely playing this card, but I think I also need light green is the only one I don't need to get up for my things and in fact that's the one that i have done and it's the one for that so i need to look at some resources that would get me that which would get me that okay i think i think that's going to be good so i'm playing that card with that card i'll do this one first gain a stone and i get one movement point onto there which gets me a mammoth uh, then I do this one, and I'm going to do the bottom effect, which is mountain skill, ice skill, which gets me a berry, and one movement, which gets me to there. Uh, and then I am going to spend my two mammoths to put my tunic down. Oh, there would be awesome. Oh, no, there's good. There's good, because that gets me yeah. a mammoth and a berry. Mammoth berry and then if i wanted to i could spend that mammoth to increase that by one which i think i need to do because i i've got my cave painting i've already built my tunic therefore therefore it's i don't need for them. anything else i don't need them for anything so that goes up to there right done starting to get the hang of it and the game's almost over well i've got i've got i've got, I've got six turns through. left yeah we're about halfway through it feels like it's nearly <laughs> over when you see a swindling <laughs> pile of cards two cards in your deck yeah <laughs> You think I've done anything yet? Yeah, I think I've done anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nowhere near as much as I should have done. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build again. So I'll go, I'll go here. Move one to get some wood. To get a wood. I'm not going to build at this point my thing. But um, so forest skill. I'm going to go up here as well. Ice skill. And here. 
thank you. Um, do I do this? Um, well, yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to have to do that. Okay. Uh, then you got a movement point. Oh, if you don't, you did the movement. movement. You did the movement early. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> it's all part of the plan, obviously. Uh, the designer is saying, Rob, remember to use your engraving power. I think it must mean the other Rob. Oh, I'm fully aware. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I need to get another one more bit of wood to trigger this one. Oh, because he's got a... Uh, as soon as it's flipped over, they're getting spent like crazy. Right, yeah. yeah. So I'm quite aware. <clears throat> but I don't have any stone. I'm saving the berries, so I've triggered this one. I need one more mouth to build that one. Got it. Moving. He has a plan. So four. One, so two, four, three, four. Nice. Get Moving you through. I've got a mammoth there. You didn't want to end on the fire? Mm. No. I need to be there. Okay. For reasons. For reasons. Um, what order does this... Oh, so I've got the thing. You can do your... Uh, fulfil these at any time on your turn. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you can spend them straight away afterwards. So we're in step three, which is building. If you were able to and wanted to build. Uh, building, no. No. Nope. Step four. Uh, Activating one of your engraving powers I can if you want to. That one, yeah. yeah. Just one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and replace. Rob's card counting. Yeah. You've got to. You've, you've got to. You absolutely need to know what card you've got coming up. No, I don't have any ice left. That's for sure. Yes, I'm going to play this one to move up my ice track, forest track, and jump one to there. Okay, so now I'm all set up right next to the Maya with six skill, and I have no cards that move me through Maya. Got one Maya and one stone. There's one left in the deck. So, instead... Where are we going to go? I've got no fire cards. I've used all my fire cards. I need to get some wood to build this hut. Because it's worth nine points. And it is this objective. But that's not easy. Because <laughs> there's like, there's not much wood around. Um, Don't expect sympathy from me. No, no sympathy coming from me. <laughs> I don't want to turn back at this stage. I really don't want to turn back at this stage. So... Uh, okay, if I can get another berry, oh, but I can't, I can't move. So that's move on mountains, which is rubbish. That's move through forest, which is rubbish. It's all rubbish. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to use this one. but for the bottom ability. So I'm going to move my forest skill up by one, my mountain skill up by one, which gets me a fire card. And I'm going to move one hex, and I'm going to move on to there, which gets me another fire card. So I have moved backwards. Um, I can't build anything. So that's my go done. There it is. There it is. I'm going to use this for the top yep. action. Which Your is to move on skill there. is five. five. So I can collect this resource and end up here. Yeah, you can just go for a wander. Yeah, I could even do a, a loop. You could. Still end up but you still only get one berry. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm going to build Ooh. using my three wood. Yep. So it's a hut. A hut. And I'm going to gain a wood and a berry. Uh, got to go on the matching terrain type. Oh, that is a disaster. So yeah, I've messed up. So I could go here. I know you can I can build there and get a fire card, mm. uh, but that wouldn't be very good because I want to get wood. Ah. Oh. So um. Uh, but there's a. I could end up here. You build here, in there, which gets you a wood and a wood and a. Oh yeah. Which is a bit counter. A wood and a stone. Wood yeah. And a stone, but let's let's do that. That's okay. The yeah. least bad option, I think, out of the ones that. Yeah, that might my mistake. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's me done, but at least I've built something now. And I could use my trigger thing to gain a, 
a green yep. advance, but I'm not going to do that. You're saving the wood for a cave painting. Might be. Scouting. Oh, so what does your scout do? It's uh, ignoring terrain restrictions. Move any number of spaces in a straight diagonal line. Don't collect the bonuses. But it means that I can end up right at the entrance of this glorious cave. Oh, so not... No. Not that way. Oh, only in a diagonal. Yeah. But as many spaces as you want. Yeah. Right. Do you want to build a cave painting there? Yes. There you go. Oh, the doom. <laughs> it's twice now. Can you feel the doom? <laughs> At last, finally, Emily was here. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I didn't really... Didn't really... No, that makes it even worse. At least if you were actively working to destroy him, no. it would feel so bad. You just accidentally crushed his Just look at it. Look at it. Right, um, so one of each resource got UK painting. Which Done. means that one has happened. Yep, that one has happened. Yep. You have UK painting and you have a stone. And um, are they not? No, that's it. Yeah. Okay. And they've got any berries left. Okay. Yeah. If anybody them. watching has any questions about the game, feel free to fire them over to me or one of the designers is in the chat. Yes, before or after, isn't it? So I can. What's that? The double move. I can. Or in the middle. Yep, that was so it. That, that mountain movement can be at any point. So it's going to be at the start. So I'm playing this one. Yep. So I'm going to do a mountain move to there, get the silver stone. And then a six ice. Ice move, which will be one, two, three, four, five, which gets me a mammoth and a fire card. So a stone, stone a mammoth, and a fire card. Four mammoth getting dropped in Ooh, here, the big one. which gets me a mammoth. And another fire card. Big move. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Is the boom. moving of these only on the bottoms of these cards? Oh, the way, is there? fire cards. Some oh, fire okay. cards. Fire cards okay. allow you to move them as well. Thank you. I didn't mention this, but if you look at your player board, if a marker ever reaches the end, if it was to go beyond that, you get the resource that's indicated instead which is different for each of us but it's not the one that matches the track okay okay should that matter I've, I've not seen that in any game i've played yet but okay definitely definitely want to use a fire card and i think this works so i'm going to play this fire card with this one and i get to do both of the abilities on the card First ability is Maya skill up by one, forest skill up by one, which gets me a stone. And one movement, which puts me back there. And then the top part of the card is I get to move seven on Maya. Right. Come on, Paul, get your act together. Seven movement on Maya, ending next to mountains, which is there. Boy fit. There would be even better. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So I could get there, but I wouldn't get the berry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have the berry. I get the berry. Then I'm going to spend that three stone to engrave an axe there. That gets me a fire card. Um, just thinking. Yeah, no, it's fine. Gets me a fire card and a bit of wood. Right. And then I can't use any of my engraving things because I've got lots of berries. You can only build one thing a turn. So even though I have the berries to build that, I can't actually do it this turn. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's my last card has come out. I have four turns left. Oof. Struggling here now. Um, that's a pound. So now, um, I suppose moving here. Boom. What's the maximum of five cards? Five cards we can have. Three. If you have more than three fire cards at the end of your turn, you have to discard. Excess. I'm going to move to here using the top. 
Okay. Uh, I get a bio card. Use me for that. Um, is that good or bad? Um, I don't need to decide now. Um, yeah, that's that's all for me. Doing the move action, so one and then one, two, three. So I get so it was berry. one on forest yeah. and three, three on Maya. Can I get a berry? Please? Get a berry. And I am building this one because it costs me three berries. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, which gets so you get a, a berry, berry and... and a mammoth. Yep. Yeah. And then I will spend a mammoth mm -hmm. to move this on to get you a wood. the hallowed six. Oh, I get a wood as well, yeah. Okay, it's because you need six because of yes. your... Yeah, okay, got it. Oh, and the last card. Okay. Good. Dun, dun, dun. I think this will work. I'm going to play these. So I'm doing the both top and bottom. Yeah. So I'm moving the green Ooh. up, gets me a fire guard. And any one movement. Any one movement, which would really jump me to here, which gets me another fire card. Fire guard. Yeah. And then I have a seven forest movement, which seven. is going to be one, two, three, which gets me another fire card. Um, can I then, because I've got this additional, can I mm -hmm. move there then with my honour, because that's what I'm playing. So I'm going to end up here, because I finished my forest movement. Sure, and, and then, then you did the planes movement. Yeah, the, yeah. the reason why I want to go that way rather than that. Okay, so, yeah. So we'll see what we're playing. One of these I have to discard at the end of my turn, because I don't have four or five cards in hand. Yeah, did you not want to play one of them at the start? I did. Time? Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, right, you just got so many fire cards. Yeah, so right, like okay. Cards. Gosh. It was just, just the way everything fell. So. Yep. Right. right. So one second, I have to burn one of these. So. Because it's like more than one fire card. No, or just, just one, one fire card. <clears throat> so my skill levels are quite high now. I can move quite far with these cards. But. Not sure I'm going to get to the end because I've got two mountain movement cards, but there's a huge amount of mountain. I could get to the end. Yeah, I can actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so. I mean, if I was to get to here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, boom. So if I save those cards for final movement. That means I think I need to do that now. I'm not moving on ice. No, so I don't need this card to move on ice. Okay, right. Here's here's what we're doing. We're playing that card with that one. And I'm going to do the fire card first. And I'm going to go one, two, three. Then I'm playing the bottom of that card, which is ice skill up by one. Gives me a wood. Uh, forest skill by one, and I get to move one space. I'll move to there. It gets me a fire card. Lots and lots and lots of fire cards. And do I want to build? Yes, I do want to build. I have three berries. So I spend those three berries to build my pot. Now, found a floor in the plan. I need to build my hut, which means I need to end up next to forest on my next turn. I'm going to build that there, which gets me the one wood that I need to build the hut. Right. That is my go done. Right. <clears throat> yes, I'm going to build. I'm going to move two through, sorry, five through um, Maya. One, two, three, four, five. So I get a berry and a fire card. Mm -hmm. uh, pass me a fire card, please. Oh yeah. We are almost out of fire cards. We I'm assuming we reshuffle the discard pile and, and go again. Um it's been an awful then, lot of them in this. As game. my next move, I'm gonna move here. 
Yeah. And then I'm going to build mine, Kate. Yay! Oh, you can't. You can't. You can't build on this tile. <laughs> Believe me, for sorry, but not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he was laughing inside. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, and then there's an earthquake. I'm and the cave collapses. Yes, which is what. Um, oh, well, well that you, you're, that in, one. you're in a position to do that as well. Yeah, I'll over that one. Don't worry. Okay, okay. So, you know, worry. Um, I could. No, I can't do anything else. Uh, I could use a fire card now, but I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. So the fire card technically should be played at the start of your turn, <clears throat> but because oh, it's yeah. no new information has been revealed, yeah, and you know it's it's yeah, all deterministic, okay. then you can. Right. Okay. Thanks. I'm just wondering. It doesn't help me actually at this point, so I'm not going to do it. Okay. Thanks. All right, Emily. Did I get a berry? I did. You did. Yeah. Bottom one of this thing. One. One. Oh, a berry. And move. Yeah. Yeah. It does work. Okay, I've got the bent cards, but okay. Right. Well, I'm going to do this one with this one. So I need to do a double. So I need to do both parts of it. Yep. Good so that. Yep. So I will do this part first. Which is probably that. Because we can also do it. Yep. There you go. So moving up the mountain track. Yep. And any more movement. Any more movement, which would be to jump myself to here and get myself a fire guard. Yep. And then we do a full mountain move, which will be which for you is one, uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, which gets me a rock and another fire guard. We shuffle the deck. Yeah, go for it. And then I get one swamp move, which will be to jump myself to here. I don't want to marsh on this one. Mine. Yep. The mine. Yeah. I think that was all the fire cards I got to draw. Any building? Uh, not just yet. Any using of an engraving power? Uh, yes, I'll do both of these. So that gets me one forest, one wood for there, please, which triggers. Uh, uh, you can only use one of your engraving oh, sorry, powers. Yeah, which, done, which is that one? So that one. Which so gets me a wood. So I now have two wood and two berries. Yeah, that we finish it on that. Wood, please. Thank you. you go. Yeah. Spent. Right. Okay. My pre pre penultimate turn is. Oh, this is quite nice. I think. Yes. So I'm going to do these two together. I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to move my forest marker back one so you don't get the bonus when going back one. I move all of my other ones forward one. Goes to there, which goes to there, which gets me a stone. Okay, that's that. Then I've got eight movement on mountains and one on forest. So I'm going to go one on mountains, one on forest. Seven more on mountains. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Getting me two more stone. Wow. Because I needed to end next to the forest so that I could spend four wood uh, yeah. and build the hut. There, getting me two more stone. Right, then I will use an engraving power. Oh, this is where it gets tasty. Look at all this stone, mm. which I don't need. Yeah, use it all. So I'm going to use all of it. Yeah. I'm not missing anything, am I? I don't, I don't have a footprint card to gain stone. So, yeah, I'm going to spend five stone. You're not limited on the amount you can spend. On you can spend any amount, but only of one type. 
So I'm going to spend five stone. So what that's going to do is it's going to move that to there, there and there. And then it would move two further. So I get two more wood. So I, I get a berry as I go past. And then I get two wood. You've played this before, haven't you? <laughs> and I have done that. And I have done that. And I have done that. Mm. Right, game over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I don't get. So I'm just letting you know, I have the potential to get to the end next turn. Yeah. Which but means next turn might be the last turn. That will end the game. It, it will. It will. Get you'll still get turn. your turns. Oh. But okay. it means the game will end next turn rather than the turn afterwards. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's bad. <laughs> And it might be in my interest, considering I've built all of my engravings, I've done my cave painting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm going to use the top action of this one to move any amount. Oh, sorry, up to my movement. On so for you, that's... Voice. And up to my movement on Maya. So I eight. is eight and Maya is five. But I'm actually No, it's it's one Maya. A oh, one Maya, sorry. Yeah. So I get five cards by moving there. Yep. And then I can go one, two, three, yeah. To there. And then four, five, five six, seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Go for a wander around. So, so you get a fire card, you get a footprint card. Right. Footprint card. I'm not gonna be able to do that. Quite slowly. And a fire card. Fire card. Uh, thank you. And then that gets uh, discarded. And do you want to build? I don't think I can. So, but I, I, I could have played. I could have played a fire card. Apparently, he has one more card than all of you. Forgot to discard one. Okay. Yeah. No. You. I was there gonna say, there was a card at some card point oh, right. you used and didn't discard. Oh, okay. But you should only have two at this point. Yeah. Thank sorry. you for spotting that. Sorry. Um, I don't know which one it was. Should I just. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Yeah, it's probably the one I needed. But I think it's safer to take the card, put it on your discard pile, and yeah. and yeah. then do it. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, doing. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just considering whether or not I could oh, use yeah. my fire card. Oh yeah. I think I've already. Yeah. I've seen a new fire. Card You've seen there. a new mm -hmm. fire card, though. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's your guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is well, disaster. One of those, well, one your 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 challenge, Rob, is to score higher than I did in my I'm first game. To... I don't think I will. Just okay. Let's get, probably get that. And then discard two of them. Move up. One, two of them. Getting you one of these. Would you like it or not? Probably not. They do have rats. No. No. It's not going to happen. It's unfortunately. A Okay, it was that card. Thank you, Dark Mind, for checking. We discarded the correct oh, card. Well Thank you. So, Rob, your penultimate turn. Yep. Possibly, probably. Definitely, maybe. Oh, of course, I could do that. Right. Oh, that's interesting. I could use this fire card, and I would lose three points by playing it. Really? Mm. Yeah. Because it moves this marker back by one, and I'm getting two points for oh. each of those. Mm. But it does give me a footprint card, which is potentially six points. But the chances of me drawing a footprint card that, that I you well, can do straight away. Well, well I've you're, done my cave painting. Up, I've done all of me? my things, and my things are high up. It's possible. It's only if I draw one that needs resources, and I don't have those resources. Yeah. So it's it's a bit of a gamble. Or if you need something really high, like I needed an eight. Mine and oh, that okay. Wasn't gonna... okay so just considering my turn. Um, I think it needs to be this one and this one. What does your leader do? Oh, you've not used yours yet. Not used it yet. That's just a uh, full movement. I moves the to the value of the. Lowest of all my sliders. Okay. So right now will be six. Right. Just put it there. Do that. Mm. Yeah.
See what I mean by the, the puzzle aspect? Yeah, which mm. is working out what I've got. So I've got these three cards left. So he's right now I just straight up six movement. Do you get the resources? Yes. Right, okay. It's just six movement across any terrain type? Yes. Because the limit is it's my lowest the lowest sliders. One. So potentially so at I, this point in the game it's that's pretty yeah, good. That's why I've been saving it towards the end. We are still here, in Sorry. case anybody's... <laughs> Sorry, folks. Right. Mm. Counting. What does this one do again, please? Uh, you score your engravings again. So for you, that would be 18 points. Mm -hmm. yep. You do have one of each. Mm -hmm. So seems like a, a good move. I'm curious to know, uh, I don't think there's many people watching us live who have played this game. But if you're watching this back afterwards and you've played it, let me know what your winning scores are. Yeah, you've got them out towards the end. Things mm -hmm. without cave painting. Yeah, I'm sort of weighing up now whether it's the cave painting or something. Well, if you can do the cave painting either this turn or next turn, then it's 18 points. That's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is... Which is more than getting to the end, actually. Getting to the end is 15. Yeah, but yeah. the 18 would be better. Yeah, yeah, apologies. If it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. I've got just the one combination of cards to do what I wanted to do. So. Um... I'm going to leave with this one and I'm going to spend a tree to move two of my sliders up. Okay. This is why your turn took ages to think about because you've got things like that that yeah. really Completely. open up the possibilities. Yeah. But at the same time, change a lot of other things. And annoyingly, mm -hmm. one thing I can't do is sort of get to what I was going for was there, but I right. can't quite get to it. Because that would be 25 points yeah. if you were to do all of those things. But what I'm doing is moving this up by two. Yep. Which then immediately triggers both of these. Nice. So that's the fire card done. That's the fire card. And now your moving actual card. It's this one. Yep. Which is dump, 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 dump. So six on ice. Six on ice. One, two, three. Fire add a mammoth. And that's another fire. There you go. And then building. Nothing I can build. Nothing you can build. But I will but you can use one of your two mammoths. Yeah. To push that up to eight, which also triggers that one and gets me another wood. The wood. Is. Right. Okay. Well, I am going to do it, because why wouldn't I? I'll play that card. I get 11 movement on the mountain. Could be a good spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll have a slight detour down here to one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm the first person to arrive. So I go on the fifteen, and I get two stone on the way. Uh, I'm not going to build, and then I am going to spend three of this, three of your finest wood, to move one, two, three, getting me a mammoth, and triggering the end of the game <clears throat> with one card left. Yeah, I've just got. If I had one more turn, I think I'd be okay, but as it happens, um, I think I'm probably going to... Interesting, because the first time I played this, none of us got anywhere near the end. <clears throat> and we were like, how is this even possible? And it is, with a turn to spare. You've just... It, it's... 
didn't see this till the end, but there's massive mountain range there. I had mountain cards left. I had seven. And it was just like, okay, so if I can get to here, mm. then that's my last two turns sorted. I suppose if you'd had all your mountain cards right at the beginning and had to use them, yep. because you didn't have anything else. Yeah. And the board is random each time you play. Yeah. So you'll have a different layout each time you play. Nice. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to move one, two, three to get the ferry. Mm -hmm. And then an additional one on uh, on ice on ice to get the yellow mammoth. Yep. Yeah. Have you taken the berry? Yes. And then I use my fire card. Yep. Yeah. To go up spend to... the mammoth. Put me one up here, getting me another berry. Yep. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah, I can't actually place my uh, bowl. Right, back here. Unless I can lose two fire cards, which I don't no, think I can. only one. Um, yeah. So, um, but I only went at one thing. I think. Yeah, you got another thing to go. Yeah, but even so, I don't think it's enough to complete any of these. So, um, yep, I uh, kind of messed up there. Okay. Uh, look on the bright side, Rob. In uh, twenty thousand years, uh, bored school children will be taking to look at your frozen bodies. So you know, <laughs> win win. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is uh, up right side, yeah. yeah. Oh, why didn't I play that? Oh, idiot ball. It's just a 27 point swing if, I, if I'd if i had yeah. one more turn. Another feeling I've, yeah. I've lost about, well, one more turn I would have been able to get that and then would have got 25 extra points. So. Yeah. Um, Emily? I don't think I can get another mammoth. That would have been nice, but that's not happening. I'm a bit stuck in a bit of a devoid no items kind of area mm. <laughs> oh, okay play this one the movement so it's a one two three four and then one there which gets me a five card which yeah is a point which is a point And I will use up the mammoth. Is it worth it? Yeah, because it's uh, this one. All oh, right, yeah, for you. Yeah, so that's an extra two points. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Rob. Final turn of the game. Yep. <laughs> These two. Up to three yours in a straight line, isn't it? This is three movement. Doesn't have to oh, be doesn't a straight. Have, line. Doesn't have to be a straight. So line. Just, yeah, just three movement on the on it. the Maya. So one, two, three. Yep. And then this kicks over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a jump to that which is ice or Maya. So no cave painting. No cave painting, you got family, but the important thing is we lived. Oh. Uh, and or whilst I'm here, because I passed through there and got myself a five card and a wood. Drop that down as well. And then I spend these two to move that up. So, so there is yeah. a question. Can you build on the turn when you move to a can? Mm. I don't know. I'm going to check that in the rules. My goal is to find so... it in the rules. So, general movement rules. Um, building is optional. So, where is the... So, it's triggered if your pawn has ended its movement on a cairn space on the cairn board. So, you can build yeah. from a cairn. Right, okay. Got go. it. Fantastic. So, I've got that one down as well. Yay made it to there there we go game is over so now we're going to add up the scores yeah. oh, i think i'll just sit up now then <laughs> <laughs> slink away but you know what you've done you know what you do differently next time yeah not sit to the left of me no possibly right first of all cairns i got 15 rob t got 14. Yeah. Yeah. right next is engravings so i got all of mine out which is 9 14 17 21. Six. Six. Emily? Uh, eight. eight. It's in the... In the, the input icon, yeah. yeah. Eight. eight. Rob? 21. 21. Uh, markers. So that marker is on the last space, which is... So 23. Three, five, six, nine. Three, five, eight, 14. You've got 23. Yeah, mine's eight, 14. No, 23. 23. Can't add up. Um, markers. So that marker is on the last space, which is seven, and that one's on the penultimate space, so I get ten. Nothing? I don't. Nothing? 
Anybody else? Three. Three. Okay, uh, completed footprint cards. I've got how, three. How did you know whether it was three or seven? So it's underneath the thing. It says, it says three or seven. Uh, I don't know where the positions are. I got three completed footprint cards, which is 18. <clears throat> Rob? Minus nine. Minus nine, unfortunately. Emily? 18. 18. 30. 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cave paintings. So my cave painting is two points for each level in that. So I get 16. Rob? 14. 14. Emily? 14. 14. Rob? No cave painting. Okay, painting Resources. One point for every two tokens left over. Two. Five. So you get two. One point. Emily, one point. Rob? No points. And fire cards. I have one fire card left. Two, one, 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 three. three. Okay, so uh, 15, 38, 48, 58, 66, 76, 82, 85. Uh, mm. 6, 20, 11, 15. You did guess at 15. <laughs> Emily, 8, 26, 42. And Rob, 14, 35, 38, 68, 71. So the scores are 85, 71, 42, 15. I did have the advantage of having played it this afternoon, which did give me definitely uh, an overall idea of... Right, do you want to give me, the, want to give me the full score again, Paul? The full score, what have I done? I get 23 points as well. Oh, did I not change yours by... Okay. Is that it again? Yeah, 73. <laughs> 73. So 85, 73, 42, 15. So yeah, Rob, you had the kind of game I played in the first game where I just couldn't do any. I just, yeah, obviously didn't didn't get it to go right. But this is the game. I mean, that's the highest score I've seen yep. since we've been playing. And to get to the end and all of my engravings and, and my cave painting out, I'm like, I don't quite know how I did that. Uh, well, somebody will watch the video about later and say, oh, at one point, Paul, you accidentally took five mammoths. Right? <laughs> but I think once you've, once you've got those engravings, yeah. you collect more resources. That's just three, but that's... Yeah. That then makes the, yeah. the later movements yeah. a lot more powerful. Yeah, I'll definitely. You can definitely see that it's all... It's so, 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 bam. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do my engravings early enough. I think I did, I did it quite late. So. I didn't do my first one until halfway through. Mm. Yeah, I was relatively. But then after I did, well. and I seemed to get loads of mammoths. I can't remember how. Then it was just suddenly, yeah, just zoomed that up. Mm. Yeah, my, the one the one thing that crippled me was I didn't have a marsh card yeah. to get into there because that would have been twenty five more points. Yeah, and that's yeah. what that's what I was working towards the entire game. And then when I got them, yeah. oh no, the one movement card I got left yeah. is the one that will only give me. Um, one additional. But you would have need the resources to build the cave painting. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. I wouldn't have got that. Which means much. you wouldn't have got that. So, but still, yeah. 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 So it's, it's swings around by both ways. So yeah, the scores were were very different. I'd be interested. Well, I think once everybody's played it two or three times, I think everybody's going to be scoring. Yeah, I think seventies, eighties. I think, and everybody will have more of an idea of what I they're doing next. Next time, the first place I'll be looking will be here. And working out what your last or the last two again the, 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 the yeah the terrain so the terrain boards were if you look on the back of the terrain boards there's an arrow so they can't go that way mm -hmm. they always go that way but if we were to swap that one for that one just for example then yeah it, it's different terrain near the end but i think you're right i think you might need to be looking at the terrain on the last tile or certainly the last two tiles because that's where your movement so you know, if you're here yeah. with eight movement on forest you go bang that's it i can get to the end yeah. so so i just wanted to one, mention one variant which is in the rule book uh which is that oh you make a freaky yeah, yeah nice. so you assemble the game boards differently so that the shape looks like a snake mm -hmm. um and it's a, it's a lot harder because you've got these choke points but it's really it's, it's quite hard to move through so that's one variant. There's another variant where you actually play with both of your leaders. Um, and then there is the solo game, which I haven't covered on the channel yet. But as you can see from here, the solo game is fairly simple. You follow all of the rules uh, as above. But at the end of the game, you score eight points for each unused clan card. So you're trying to get there as fast as you can. 
Um, but you're not playing against any bot or any other player. Mm -hmm. You're just playing the game to get as much score as you can. And for each turn you have spare, you get an extra eight points. It calls 80 points winning the game. So the solo mode is actually good practice for being efficient with your cards and, and learning how to do it. But the game takes up to six people. And I think with six players, because we didn't have much jumping over each other, except maybe yeah. at the start. But I think with six players, the board is going to get busy. Yeah. Um, and it's the, it's the same size board and it's the same number of cave paintings. So in, in our game, we had the same number of cave paintings as we would have had in a in a five or six play game. Uh, yeah, Paul Kelly summed it up. This is a this is a lot of thinking here. Anybody who looks at this game and goes, oh yeah, it's I mean, rules wise, it's light to medium, but the thinkiness in working out the puzzle, especially when you've got the fire cards, which give you special abilities, mm -hmm. and working out the order in which you need to do things to accomplish what you want to accomplish, that's quite a quite a tricky puzzle. Mm. So Anyway, this was, as I mentioned at the start, this was a sponsored video. Thank you very much to Chili Fox Games for sponsoring it. As such, you're not going to get any opinions from us in this video because that would be wrong. We all have our opinions and we're going to share our opinions with each other uh, once the video has finished. But if you want to find out what I think about it, I do talk a bit more about my games in my end of the games month video log. So at the end of each month, I do a video log of all of the games that I've played and I am a little bit more open there with my feelings on the game. I'd like to cover the solo mode of this at some point while it's still fresh in my memory. I might even do that tomorrow because Vicky's out in Taunton. So, yeah, I'm not going to promise it right now, but tomorrow there may be a solo playthrough of this on the channel. Highly likely. Keep an eye out if you're interested in that. But thank you very much, Rob. Oh, Rob. Thank you. And Emily. Thank you. And thank you for everybody for watching. Thank you to all of my patron supporters that fund the channel. And we'll see you all next time. Cheers, all. Bye-bye. Bye. -byes. Bye.